This Sporting Life proudly presents the complete pictorial set of Australian birds Roy and HG have shot. The pelican, the starling, the heron, the kookaburra, the shag and thousands of others. This magnificently presented volume is now available at all ABC shops. The Players Theatre presents The World of Ian, with Paul Surinan as Ian, Lisa Forrest as Susan, Cole Joy as Ian's dad, Greg Matthews as Ian's friend Cole, Annette Shunwar as Susan's friend Deirdre, and Ted Mulrey as Bob the Neighbour. I love Susan, Dad. Mm, fair enough. I do. I just do. I love her more than anything. She's my dream. My golden dream. She is my heaven. She is my life. Mm, I hear what you're saying, Ian. The thing is, son, you've got to get Susan aside and pop the big question. Well, how'd they do it in your day, Dad? Well, it was different, you see. I wrote a note. Will you marry me? And I tied it to me camshaft. <laughs> ah, it didn't take long for your mother to find that, let me tell you. But we were pretty wild in our day. <laughs> Sounds a bit weird, Dad. Sounds <laughs> not all interested in things below decks. Hmm. Probably says now. Doors unlocked. Oh, hi, Cole. Great, Patty. Howdy, Pops. Hey, Colin. How's things, man? Oh, not bad at all, mate. Not bad at all. Knock, knock. That must be Bob next door. Come here, Bob. Ah. <sighs> Anyone interested in wedding a line? <laughs> nah, not today, mate. No. Nah. What about you, young Ian? Depends on Susan, Bob. She doesn't mind a bit of a fish. She should be here soon. Can I come in? Ah, come in, young Susan. Hi, babe. Hi. Susan, how would you and young Ian like to come out with me on the boat? I could fish and you two could bugger about below decks. <laughs> Dad, have you been telling Bob secrets? Martina Navratilova loves Australia and loves Australians. Whenever she makes the trip, she pops into the King Wally Lewis dairy, Mwoolumbar, puts on the bib, slips on the nose bag and bellows to his majesty, fill her up, tubby. King Wally Lewis cheese, guaranteed to please. Due to a change in the federal law, King Wally Lewis cheese must now be known as New South Wales Rugby League cheese. Australians, you've sat in the bleachers for long enough. And now it's time to strap on the boots and blow your trumpets. And tonight on the trumpet, we're located at a historic and scenic, very, very scenic Malabar. It's a tremendous place. Behind us, of course, in the distance, you can see the treatment works. That's the fantastic Malabar treatment works. Arguably, arguably, Asia's finest treatment works in your older style. Roy, you've been here many, many years, seen a lot of changes here. Can you take us through some of them? Yeah. Look, it, what uh, has happened here at Malabar is fantastic. This, uh, this whole area of the coastline was dead. And basically it followed the Mediterranean pr principle, i.e. the Mediterranean uh, is dead as well. And the genius of, of the human experience in, la in, in joining uh, really back doors to the ocean uh, that we saw in, uh, in, in the Mediterranean was done here. And the genius of it was this, that uh, you get everyone to essentially poo in a very big bowl and you pump it out into the sea. Now, this killed the fish, which meant that people had to go further out to, uh, to catch fish that didn't have two heads, etc., etc. Uh, you bring them in with the excess fish, you dump them out in the, uh, out in the bush where they kill the soil as well. So you've got dead fish, dead soil, brilliant. But here at Malabar, the treatment is going further and further out to sea, which has cleaned up this magnificent area. If you have a look at this midden here, if I can just uh, spend a bit of time, and we can see whether this is alive or not. Let's have a look here. You can see here, there is no faeces, no excrement, no example of urine at all. Look at that, HG. Magnificent, Roy. Look that at is that. beautifully that clean. Is pie, yeah. Jeff, you had a beautiful pie, bit of meat, done nicely to a turn. You can put it on that and eat it. Yeah, it, it looks fabulous. Clean as a whistle. What a trumpet. Malabar, they've done tremendous work here. Hats off. Hats off! Excrement! 
Hats off, bums. Hats off. What's happening? This is beautiful. Coming up next on ABC TV is Clive Hale in his brand new shirt. Yes, welcome back to this sporting life. And now, of course, the uh, time for the competition segment on the life. And this week's prize, yeah. a fantastic series of prizes in your traditional manner. There's your hat, your Royal HG hat. You've got your cassette, your pound for pound cassette. And of course, this magnificent three Australian jokes T-shirt. It is a cracker. I think this is the Kevin Sheedy, Jeff French and Boozner AJ shirt in your three Australian jokes. For some lucky listener who can answer the following conundrum. Really yes, set it out. In picture this, pick the odd. Prime Minister out. Let's have a look at them. We've got A, Robert Menzies, B, B, come on, Malcolm Fraser, C, C. come on, Billy McMahon, yeah, don't oh, don't and D, Jack McEwen, Black Jack McEwen. Now, out of those four, which is the odd man out? Don't just say one was a Freemason, because they all bloody well were, so that's not the answer. Get your, uh, get your entries in. in, too. Picture this, this sporting life, care of ABC TV, GBA Box, 9994, Sydney, 2001. Yes, Roy, and uh, one story that I think has eluded a lot of people over the weeks oh, yeah. is this magnificent idea that jockeys, oh, that yeah. jockeys should wear endorsements on their gear while they're riding horses. Like tennis and, players. Like tennis players or, uh, in fact, uh, racing car drivers have it plastered oh, all yeah. over them, uh, not to mention the car. And here I think we've got a bit of a picture of Kevin the Rev Moses and uh, Kevin's idea for a boot endorsement. Oh, there, hold yeah. it over here, yeah. right over here we go, on this camera here, let's move the rubbish out of the road. And there it is for uh, a, a prominent multinational uh, oil firm there, Kev is boot and his endorsement. Now, Roy, could this work? Could this be the future of racing? We've got problems with crowds, we've got problems with turnover. Uh, Roy, could that bring punters back? Would punters love to see endorsements plastered all over jockey? Oh, I think they would. What's sad about Kevin there is he had to draw that up himself. He didn't even approach the uh, multinational people involved. He just turned up one afternoon uh, with it on his boot of his own uh, volition. And I think that shows enormous enterprise on behalf of the young kitty. I, you know, hat off to him, uh, no risk. I think it can work. Look, it's your right. Yes. It's your right, I think, to get sponsorship. Yeah. And tennis player can, Ivan Lendl, Patrick Rafter, yes. can ask for whatever he wants. He can go to that particular multinational or any other and say, I'll wear your gear if you'll pay me some money. Uh, whether you can say, I'll wear your gear, uh, whether you pay me money or not, I'm not so sure. And this is the mo difficulty with the Moses position, I think. Had he approached the firm and said, listen, I'm very interested in your company, I always use your gear, uh, do you mind if I wear it because I love the design and I love the look of it? Uh, different proposition. But yes, I think it uh, work. Well, I'll go further. I'll say that, uh, you know, basically want to plaster it all over the horse as well. Oh, uh, yes. I think horses, you know, yeah. I know the Golden Slipper is coming up on Saturday. I love to see horses out there with uh, bunting all over them, with decals strapped to them. Oh. I think a horse is bigger than a jockey normally, although recently, uh, obviously, there's been some uh, dispute about this. Yeah. And I think the horse is the one to carry the message. And I would like to see this. A jockey nude yeah. on a horse with a lot of tattoos all over him for things like ranging from, you you know, Nike to uh, say if we were in the business, King Tide Sleep Makers and all that sort of gear. Yeah. A nude yeah. jockey, absolutely baffed, on a horse with a lot of bunting over. Tattoos. Tats on him. That's a real commitment. So you commit a jockey to the product for life. I in reckon... the same way you'd commit the horse if you sort of branded it. Right in and there. And then just sprayed the brand. So you got that sort of relief work on the buttock and uh, all that sort of gear. Well, I would well, love I think that. Would you? Well, people would would love that. People would go, I think, to see that. I think horses would yeah. like that. And of course you've got areas that would be more valuable, you know, like the buttocks would be more valuable because people love looking at jockey's buttocks. Yeah. And the horse's buttocks because people love looking at... Well, you uh, get unified, say, Shane Dye and <laughs> Better Loosen Up. Well, let's say King Tide Sleepmaker, I'd love to You'd get the You'd have half the decal on the buttock of one and the <laughs> other half, they'd be linked forever. And I'd, no. Well, I'd love to get the K of King Tide onto Shane Dye's bum yeah. and then the uh, I onto, say, Kevin Moses. Yeah. Mike.